on this episode, we regress to the mindset of a toddler. So there it is, the enemy comes in, and then flies away. Oh! So we get easily overwhelmed. This is getting complicated by the second. But also, extremely excited. This is shmupping. Now we're shmupping, baby. Now we're shmupping. <sighs> Welcome. This is Christian. This is Laserless Academy. This is episode 24 of the Advanced Shmup Tutorial. Uh, and we have an enemy. There's an enemy on the screen. It's moving around. But today we're gonna do more things with this enemy. We want it to move around a bit more gameplay-ish, so we can kind of like get a feel for what a gameplay uh, feels like, what, what our final game will feel like. And maybe, maybe we're gonna make it fire a bullet. Let's see how we're gonna, how far we're gonna get. Now, uh, something to keep in mind is that this is going to be, this is, this is all preliminary stuff. This is just like, we're not creating the, the, the actual enemy. We're just creating one enemy, and to see kind of like what elements the enemies needs and what kind of problems we 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 run into you we already ran into that like the sideways scrolling problem and that's kind of the kind of thing that i want to discover why i do with this thing all right so the um, doggy zone was kind of like the task was to make the enemy fly in stay for a while and then go back um let's try to program this uh, something I want to maybe do here is because because, because maybe I want to have like multiple enemies with different behaviors, right? So it might be, I think, a good idea to kind of like track what kind of behavior an enemy is supposed to have because right now we have no way of knowing, you know, what type of enemy that is. Maybe we're going to have multiple enemies. Um, something I like to do is <laughs> I'm going to have a variable called brain <laughs> and that, that variable will tell us, uh, you know, how... Uh, uh, you know what kind of behavior that enemy is doing um, and then so we can like have brain two brain three brain for different kind of brains will uh, result in different kind of behaviors that's kind of like maybe a system that we can think of uh, another uh, variable a property of the enemy i want to have is age i want to the enemy to be an age to have age to be an age <laughs> um and we immediately see that uh, there's age but we also have like the si right there's this counter that does the animation maybe there's a way of bringing these two together. Maybe you can don't need that counter and you can get away with just the age. Let's think about this later. Let's first um, implement the age and see if that's even something that we can use to animate the uh, enemy. So here we're doing the enemies. Um, I'm gonna first do the brain and then I'm gonna move the enemy. So I'm gonna go if e.brain equals one then. And then else e dot uh yeah yeah e dot brain equals two then like you would this is the way you would usually they would the way we did previously um the way we programmed our enemies we had like a like a huge if else statement to take care of different behaviors of the enemies um for now let's just start with one brain um uh -oh. All right, so um, so now the enemy will do different things depending on how old it is, right? So we're gonna, uh, right immediately, we're gonna do e dot h plus equals one. Maybe we're gonna do this later. We're gonna do this here, I think. Uh, and see here, you can see that this si variable, that gets higher, but the h variable also gets higher, right? These are kind of like related uh, variables. Maybe you can squeeze them together into one at some point. Now that would mean that because we, in the shots we used kind of like the same system here. So maybe we also have to rewrite the, the way the shots are being animated as well. Uh, man, this is this is tricky. This is tricky. We kind of like building up, setting up multiple systems, and I'm gonna when we see parallels somewhere, we want to merge those systems together. So uh, our entire game is a little bit more efficient. It reuses the same code for different purposes. Uh, but for now, let's just continue. <laughs> this whole episode is gonna be just like me explaining some problems with this, and like caveats, and then continuing doing this anyway. Um, so if, let's say if h is gr smaller than 30, if this is then, uh, else if h is smaller than 60, then. Uh, let's make it smaller than 60 and then smaller than 20. So 60 frames 
uh, is one second. So for one second it will fly down, it will stay there, and then it will fly up. So uh, here it is going to be fly down, uh, stay, fly up. Right? That's that's my that's my thinking here. Uh, that's that's my brain. Uh, and then we are going to uh, here when we spawning the enemy. Where do we spawn the enemy? Where is it? Where is it? Um, here, let's set these to zero. So when we spawning them, there is no movement at all. And then go back to gameplay. So when we stay. Um, we want e.sx, e.sy, we want mm, sx to be 0 0.2, right? Because that's the, at the speed at which the, the, the thing is scrolling, the screen is scrolling. And when we fly down, we want sx to be actually big. So let's just go like 2. I don't know if that's, that's good. And then here, actually the SX, sy is never changing, right? So let's just remove sy from the equation altogether. And then um, when it flies up, it's go, it goes minus two. Right. Now the problem is like the enemy is ne never being destroyed right now. It just flies away and then it continues flying away. So that's a bit of an issue, something that we have to think about. But yeah, let's just see what happens. All right. <laughs> uh, e.h. E.h. dot <laughs> hee. Oh, okay. <laughs> bye bye, enemy. Uh, it's supposed to be Y. <laughs> okay, we overshot way too much. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Uh, okay, so let's go. Let's go with one. Let's make it fly in slower. Okay, okay, and then stays and then flies back. Ooh, yeah, that's what we wanted. That's good. Uh, now we want to maybe spawn it off screen, right? So we're gonna spawn it at minus 16. So there it is, the enemy comes in and then flies away. Oh, dear, 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 dear. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe we want the enemy to be like, uh, to, not to fly, because it flies a bit too deep, I feel. So let's go uh, like this. Yeah, yeah, see? Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I dig it, I dig it. Let, what, one time. That's good. Um, one problem I have is that the enemy now looks a little bit, um, maybe the 0 0.2, I don't like how it uh, scrolls with the background, so maybe we're just gonna set it to zero. Yeah, see? Okay, there is a bit of a problem. <sighs> you know what, it lets me, now I want to maybe set it to 50, maybe, because it, it kind of doesn't encroach on the, on the player space. I want it to encroach on the player space, maybe a little bit. Now, if you look at this, there is a bit of a problem, and that is, I mean, there's a bunch of problems here, but the one big problem that I see is that it is look, it looks a bit robotic, you know, it's like, you know, and it's like this, it looks like a, uh, I don't know, like an animatronic attraction a little bit, not, not really like a flying thing. And uh, we already talked about this. This is because of the animation. The animation is completely linear right now. So it's moving at a constant speed and then it stops immediately without any deceleration. And then it continues going, going up with a, with a, again, with the kind of like same, robotic linear speed. One way of doing this, fixing this, may be something like um, e dot sy um, equals a max zero uh, e dot sy minus 0 0.1. Um, so what we're doing here is instead of just setting it to zero, we subtract 0 0.1 from the speed uh, over the frames of the multiple frames. Um, and the max, uh, max function here makes sure that never drops below zero. Um, so maybe maybe like something like this. Let's see how that works. Okay, the solution was a bit too subtle. Uh, I, I, I want to make it like, you see now, now it really breaks down, but now it uh, slows down. I always say breakdown, but it means slows, it slows down. Um, now we need to maybe yeah, see, but the, now this deceleration is too slow. So we need to f pick a good, uh, no, maybe 0 0.2. Yeah, that's good. And now when we're accelerating up, uh, I want um, sy minus equal 0 
0 0.03. Yeah, see now it, it feels more, more natural. Let's go with 0 0.4 and let's go 0 0.3 here. Now it feels like I'm, maybe I should be going faster at the beginning so the slowdown is more pronounced. Yeah, okay, that's good, but now it's, yeah, see, we don't, all those numbers are highly dependent on each other. And it's very subtle, like once you change one thing, you need to change another thing as well. Yeah, that seems good. It feels like maybe the animation could also go a bit faster. Let's go to 0 0.2. Yeah, that seems a bit better. Uh, maybe 1.5. <laughs> it's, it's all about tweaking numbers. And I feel like, I feel like we could do it 12 frames. I feel it should be stay in the upper third. Okay, good. So this is what we wanted. Um, fly in and out brain. Um, but you can already see the problem here. This is like a very simple Zaku enemy. Like very simple, right? And the code just to do like this simple animation is already 31 tokens, right? Gah. And this is kind of like really simple code, right? It's it's not really complex in any, any shape or form. If you want to have like complex behavior with multiple states, maybe there's like a boss fight and so forth, these things will be, become more and more and more elaborate. And I'm just like worried that this is not sustainable in the long term. Um, so yeah, we probably need to find maybe a system, we need to figure out a system in which we can have plenty of enemies, with very different behaviors. Um, that we can um, somehow, uh, that we can kind of pull off in a token different manner. And we're going to get to that when you're going to get to that. Um, so one thing also to note that you already, that we already noticed tweaking this, creating this behavior is that there is a lot of like tweaking with numbers and then always running the game to see how it works and then going back, you know, like with this back and forth between running the game and tweaking numbers. So it's like you want to have um, a way to quickly preview changes because all of these numbers that we're going to tweak with are highly sensitive and you want uh, you want to be able to tweak them quickly and quickly see results. So again, maybe we're going to need uh, some kind of editor for the behavior. So something where you can like while the game is, game is running, while you things are happening, you can tweak the numbers and see immediately the difference that it makes, right? Okay. So let us put this into the takeaways. Uh, here are the takeaways. So concerning enemy behavior, highly sensitive numbers need immediate feedback. Behavior your kinda hard. Um, inefficient to code in. We need to find a more efficient way to code to code this in, I guess, or or need an efficient way. Need an ef efficient way to define. Let's call it define. Okay, good. So now that we have an enemy that uh, is scrolling in, uh, let us take care of um, the bullets. For that, uh, we need to actually create a bullet and now <laughs> Well, I mean, let's go. So I'm gonna actually recreate a sprite. I'm gonna do it by hand, I'm not gonna copy it. And I'm gonna rec recreate a sprite that I had in my mockup. And we're just gonna use that one. I'm gonna see if that even works. It's not a design I tested before. It's something that I just did, you know, on a whim, uh, which is fine as a starting point. Um, so um, the color that we associate with enemies is always red. So I thought I'm gonna use reddish hues for the shot. Something like this. Uh, it is not correctly placed. This is the correct position. So that's going to be 73, 0. Okay. So let us create that sprite. Don't forget the comma. Um, 73, 0. 7 across and 7 high. And then um, uh, we are going to like we're going to do an offset. I think it's 4-4. Four, four. It should be 4-4, four, four, right? Uh, let's see. 1, 2, no, it's 3-3. Three, three. 
uh, and this is going to be 22. This is going to be enemy bullet. Okay, so another array that we need to create, not and just enemies, but also bulls. I mean, let's just call it bulls. I don't want to spell out bullets. Uh, enemies already, enemies is already pretty long. I'll just call it bulls. Um, here's the thing. And we are already talking about this. Now I'm really confident. I'm almost certain that we can just reuse the shots function for this. The do shots function, right? Like this is this is basically all that the, the bullets, the enemy bullets will be basically, I'd think they will be basically the same as the enemy as the player shots. Uh, so it would be nice maybe to uh, rewrite the do shots function so it can uh, work for enemy bullets and for shots. Um, so let's let's call it let's call it do bulls, uh, and then there's going to be an array, right? We're going to supply the function with an array, and then uh, the function will run through that array, right? That's is what what's what I'm thinking. So when we are now in the update function. Um, Instead of the do shots, we're gonna do bulls. Did, did I say bulls with double L? It's single L here, single L here. Okay, so it's not a bull. It's it's bulls, and then um, we're gonna do shots, right? So this will uh, maybe I shouldn't have renamed this to bulls. I don't know. I just like felt right. Um, so we are now running this, this all this code over an array that we supply in through a uh, parameter, and this allows us to run this function on different arrays. That's what that was my goal here. That's why I did this in the first place. First of all, let's see if this still works. It still works. And now we can use the same thing. We can use the same function in update function here um, to not just loop over shots, but also loop over bolts. Right? So we can do both things. Now we are at this point we are not spawning any bullets, so let us spawn a bullet, uh, an enemy bullet. Uh, so let us do again go to gameplay. Let's just get this code that spawned a shot, and let us just like um, say like if e dot age is exactly sixty, then. And then we're going to add the shot. Now again, this might be a case where we might want to actually have a function that does this for us, but we just want to create a like a, like a placeholder system. Um, the um, position is going to be e dot uh, x, e dot y. Um, Speed x is okay, speed y is gonna be minus two or something like this. We don't know how fast birds are supposed to fly at this point. I'm gonna see. Uh, we're gonna make a array, single array, that is just gonna be the bullet number. Uh, 22. Um, and si is, we're just not gonna care about the si. It's, it's, it can be zero, it's fine. Uh, let's put it to one. Okay, so let's see if that if that works. <laughs> it worked. It just <laughs> went wrong direction. I always get it wrong. Why did I get it wrong? I don't understand. Okay. Something that is odd is that it it doesn't fire from the center. Why? Um, P set. Let's do a piece it in case. Let's now now the huh, need to pick a good color for the piece it. Uh, let us pick pink. Is gonna be just like let's make an orange piece at nine. Piece it. Um, oh right, right right. We cannot actually do this here. Oh oh, I know what the problem is. See the problem is that I think the bullet is not being affected by. <laughs> You, you guessed it. It's not being affected by um, by the scroll X. <laughs> it's another auto scroll X problem. I told you we are going to make our life a lot more difficult. 
Um, so yeah, sh right now shots are not being affected by scroll X, uh, which is good and bad. Right, it's good because now they're really coming out of the the our, our plane and so forth. But it's bad because now, like, let me let me demonstrate the problem. You see how the bullet is now kind of like moving above the trees. It's kind of like moving sideways when I move sideways, and it's as actually moving against the the. You can see how it's moving against the the play, the enemy, right? So. The enemy bullets should be moving together with the enemy sideways, kind of like scrolling with the background as well, uh, if you want to do that. But then if you want to treat the enemy bullets and the player bullets the same, then the player bullets also should scroll with the background. Man, <laughs> this is getting complicated by the second. <laughs> okay, so let's try to, to pull this off and let's see if there's, there's bound to be some problems with that. Uh, but yeah, if the, we're gonna make the shots. Uh, oh, I'm kind of surprised by the way. Um, uh, yeah, we made a mistake here. We added um, the enemy bullets to sh the shots array, but the shots array is actually for the player bullets. Uh, and I maybe want to keep them separate. Uh, so we're going to add it to the bulls array. Uh, so that will make it so that actually the, the player bullet is no longer visible <laughs> because we actually have to draw the player bullets. Um, with the player bullets, I actually want to draw them actually maybe even above the player ship. Um, so above everything, actually. Uh, bulls. Right. Okay, it works again. And now we can see that the bullets is where it's supposed to go. Um, but also, you see that the player shot is now no longer aligned with our ship. <laughs> no! <laughs> because now it's being affected by the horizontal scrolling. Um, and so now sometimes it, it now is not aligned, but if we are on the very left side, now it's aligned, right? Because uh, by the time we're on the right side, the background uh, and, and the ship are kind of like no longer in the same place. Uh, the way to fix this is when we're spawning the player bullets, we just have to subscri subtract the X scroll. Which you can already tell, like this is getting this is getting complicated. This is this 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 is bound to create a lot of problems in the future as well. Uh, but fine, let's let's just let's just let's just try this. Um, so a minus x scroll minus x scroll minus x scroll minus x scroll. Okay, okay, good. Now the bullets are with the player, but I see. Oh wait, uh, I don't want to. Not no x scroll in the white dimension. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's good. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we fixed that problem. And we don't get any adverse effects. Like something I would pay attention to like now. If so, so I guess now the bullets are kind of like moving with the background. Um, so maybe it, I'm looking at, at some kind of problems with the trajectory, some kind of like weird janky movements sideways or something with the shots. But no, it feels, feels natural. It feels good. Dodge that bullet. Right, let's return to making the enemy bullet fly. So again, we're gonna make it two. Uh, we, whoops, <laughs> see, that's good, that's good. It shot a bullet at us. So this is good. Now enemies are flying in and shooting at us. So let us maybe now create um, a situation where the um, new enemies are spawning all the time. Um, because right now we just have one enemy. I just want this to be happening more often. Uh, 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 uh. So where are we doing this, goals? So this is how we spawn a new enemy. I'm gonna cut this out. And I'm gonna create like a new new help, new little function, helper function, I guess. Um, spawn n. Uh, so yeah, whatever, spawn n. And we'll just create a, a little enemy for us. And then an update function when we are driving the game, um, maybe we're gonna do this do we do this at the end? Sure, sure. let's do it before we, we do. So we're gonna go if t um, modulo 60 equals zero, then 
spawn n. So modular, we did that before. Uh, we're going to take the uh, uh, current frame, uh, we're going to divide it by, z uh, by 60, then we're going to get the reminder. So it did evenly divides into 60. Um, well, if the reminder is zero, so it evenly divides into 60, then we're going to spawn an enemy, which means every 60 frames we're going to spawn a new enemy. And then they're coming in here. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Okay, so something I don't like right now is that they're always spawning at the same spot. So let us do like R&D. Uh, it's 128, right? But uh, yeah, I don't want them to spawn all the way at, uh, on the edge. So I'm gonna go 10 plus, uh, wait, so no, 10 plus R&D 128. I think that's good. Let's try that. Oops. Oh yeah, come on, Mystic. Yeah, see, now we're getting kind of like, we're get. this is, this is shmopping. Now we're shmopping, baby. Now we're shmopping. Like this, this feels, this is, we are getting the, the shmop feels right now. This is, this is good. Um, now maybe we want to move them around a little bit in a, in a Y direction. So let's go plus R and D 32. Uh, minus R&D 32. So we're gonna spawn them maybe further off screen. So they sometimes they fly in f uh, closer and sometimes further in. And then that means that we might maybe have to make them fly further into the screen. Be bold. Fortune favors the bold, <laughs> as, as a crypto mogul Matt Damon said. Uh, I think we need to spawn even them even further. Even further. And then maybe make them fly faster. Wee wee! Yeah, see, now we're now we're cooking with fire. So let us make it. Now let us. Let me... Yeah, yeah, yeah. See. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they're really encroaching on my space, my dance space. Oh yeah, maybe still still too much. You can see how, how much number tweaking this is, right? Yeah, 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 this is good. Because I, you know, I want them to be at a certain position, right? I want to, them to move in a certain way. And uh, for that, I need to really tweak them a lot. And you can see how they're, because they're now at weird sub-pixel positions, sometimes they're uh, fighting against the background. You can see them jittering against the background when I scroll side sideways a little bit. It's good enough. They are overlapping a little bit. And this is kind of like a problem with, you know, randomly spawning enemies. You might think like, oh, let us make a... I don't want to design a level, shmup level. It's just like randomly spawn enemies. It's going to be a roguelike. <laughs> but the problem is with randomly spawning enemies. It looks janky. They overlap. Whoa, what was that? Look. Oh, wow. Oh, I know what's happening. That's cool. Um, the problem is like they uh, start randomly spawning and they start overlapping and then you don't really have like a sense of flow. Like you don't really feel like there's intention. It's just like just a rain of enemies. Um, so they kind of like don't feel intentional and that that really takes away from the enjoyment of the game. Uh, I think for a really good shmup, you need to, you cannot rely on randomness unless you have like a really sophisticated uh, a random algorithm that is kind of like based on a, on a fundamental understanding of how shmup level design works. And yeah, that, that's that's going to be outside of the scope of this tutorial. But okay, we are spawning enemies now. Um, before we finish this up today, I want to maybe make the enemies go away because you saw some flickering. I think the problem was that the enemies were actually uh, going so negative, they become positive and, uh, you know, they spawned at... 32,000 pixels and then went up and then flickered on, onto this back onto the screen. Uh, so I'm gonna go um, go negative and then we're gonna go like if uh, e dot y is smaller than um, minus 32, then I don't know if minus 32 is correct. So the width, let's go minus 16 then, right? Because we know how big that enemy is. It's 16 pixels in width. And then we're gonna go del uh, enemies, right? We're gonna delete the enemy. And in order to verify that this worked, we are going to, in the draw function, uh, we are going to 
print the number of enemies on the screen, uh, on, on, the, on the debug. We had some other debug there. Where, where's our other debug? Yeah, let's get rid of that one. Okay, so one enemy, two enemies, three enemies. Okay, the enemies are getting destroyed. They're, the enemies are getting destroyed in the comments <laughs> with facts and logic. <laughs> uh, okay, so let us apply the same logic to bullets as well though. Um, see, we have them here and then we can go or s dot y is greater than uh, uh, let's go 130, right? No, we are not, so we're deleting the bullet if it leaves the screen on the, on the upper part of us, uh, um, if, if, if it leaves the, the top edge of the screen, but we also want them to leave the bottom edge of the screen. I added some leeway because, you know, the bullets are sometimes, have a size, and if it just um, disappears right when it touches the edge of the screen, that might look janky. And yeah, so like it's always good to add maybe a healthy dose of leeway there, I think. Um, I also want to see if this worked. Bulls. Yeah, the enemies, uh, the bullets are being destroyed. Cool, 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 cool. We can now imagine a, a shmup being played like this. We can now, this is, this is, we are basically done, baby. But for now, let us move on to the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, the doggy zone. So you see what we have right now. We see, you see enemies are coming in, they're shooting at us. There's a key element that is missing. What is the element? Can you guess what is missing? That's right. Any kind of collision detection is completely missing. We don't have any kind of collision detection. So that is gonna be part of the doggy zone. Can you come up with a collision detection system that allows us to hit the enemies and allows the enemies to hit us and allows the bullets to hit us? All these three things have to be covered by uh, ideally one collision detection function system, whatever. We already did collision detection, but it was kind of like based on eight times eight sprites. Now we need a more flexible collision detection system that um, uh, collides any kind of collision box, any kind of size and shape of collision box. Well, the shape is gonna be square, but any kind of size of collision box with an, another collision box. Um, so this is gonna be the task for the dog zone to come up with the system. Yes, 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 and this is also the part where I'm gonna say big thank you and a huge shout out to all the beautiful people who are supporting this show on coffee.com, coffee.com slash lazy devs. This is a place where you can support the show and as a little thank you you get to see new episodes earlier earlier than they get released on youtube so that's kind of nice uh, also this time around i want to say a big hello and welcome to uh, two newcomers to our subscribers supporters uh, which is jose aular and phil unstuck and also I wanted to read out a comment. So this is not actually from this tutorial, this is from a different video that we made way back in the days. Uh, it's called Five Bad Genres for Your First uh, Game. It's kind of like a negative video where I s tell you know people why some genres are, I think, bad for as your first game. And of course, that creates a <laughs> constantly creates a new flow of people disagreeing with me. And Paul Blart is another person who comes in and shares his opinion. Um, so great video, although I have to say I disagree a little bit on uh, platformers and runners. And I'm going to skip some part. I think platformers are perfect for learning, assuming you're using a game physics engine to do the collisions for you. It teaches player input, basic level design, fundamental logic, and making the game feel good. All you need to play around with is the player's speed and or jump height. Uh, almost every intro level game dev video tutorial focuses on making platformer or runner style game. and. For for good reasons. Yes, platformer um, tutorials are quite common, that's true, uh, but I don't think it's because they are easy to make. Uh, it's because they are incredibly popular. This is a very popular genre and a lot of people want to make platformers. So uh, creating a tutorial for how to make a platformer in your engine is a good way to bring people into an engine. That doesn't mean that these are um, games that are easy to make and I think that's kind of like a problem as well. I wouldn't recommend using a physics engine to do a platformer. Um, the reason for this is that physics engines are usually designed to recreate real world physics, physical interaction in the real world, and platformers are not real world physics. They are made up physics that feel good, but they're not really real physics. And you know, there's plenty of examples. For example, the fact that you can control the height of a jump during the jump 
by how long you press the button. That's not how real jumping works. You cannot control how hard you jump after you jump. <laughs> That's not how it works. So in order to make a platformer with a physics engine, you kind of have to break the physics engine or twist it or make it do something that it was not designed to do. And I think, but I think there's also like a more fundamental problem in it, and that is when an engine is there and is doing something for you, sure, you get that thing done maybe, but also the thing that the engine is doing, you never learn. And it's kind of like part of any kind of game development. The engines will always do some things for you. That's why you're using them, right? But you want to make sure that the things that the engines are doing for you are actually things that you don't care about. And I just don't think collision detection is the thing that you really don't care about for a platformer. The physics, the movements, you know, the interaction is so important to the, to the core gameplay. And you don't want an engine to be halfway doing that, but also kind of you also struggling against that. That's not good. Not to say that you cannot make platformers this way, but I, in my experience, it was always a very frustrating experience for my students. They ended up having really janky platformers where, you know, things were ha constantly happening that um, they didn't expect or they didn't know how to fix because the engine was doing it. And then, you know, you just end up fixing all those problems all the time and not focusing on basic player input, basic level design, fundamental logic and those things because you keep working on those bugs, trying to stomp out all those bugs. I do agree that uh, a runner is probably a way better choice for your first game and way more viable for a newcomer, but um, also I think that's something that's very different from a jump and run. These things look similar, but they're not similar underneath. They're very different underneath. Anyway, so we now have some enemies and we have some shooting. Now the stage is set to make collision detection in our game. We're gonna take care of the collision detection. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.